Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Grace Committed Chats, brought to you by Grace Committed Church here in Philadelphia. I am your host, Caleb Watt, here with my fabulous, fabulous, I like oh, that word, oh. splendid, splendid. Uh, I feel touched. Oh, you feel touched? Splendid co-host, Pastor Doug. Pastor Doug, how are you doing today? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty fabulous now. <laughs> oh, wow. Fanta- fantabulous, right? Fantabulous. Uh, have people said, do people still say that? Probably not. Oh. That's okay. You are not a real Gen Zer. Oh. Am I am I older? No. <laughs> Is that what you're trying to imply? <laughs> no. Should I have said rad? Rad. <laughs> rad. Rad. You went back a few generations with that one now. <laughs> I'm a boomer now. <laughs> but um anyways, Pastor Doug, how are you? I'm doing well. How about yourself, Caleb? Fantabulous. Rad. <laughs> rad. Poggers. <laughs> Poggers. There you go. Bring it back. Bring, bring it, it back. back. Bring it back. Bring it back. But we have Quite a spicy topic today, Pastor Doug. Pastor Doug, what are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> spicy. Spicy. Um, so we're right now in this series on the book of Daniel, um, and the series is called Counterculture. And the basic gist of the series is that we're looking at what it means for us as Christians to interact with the world around us, mm-hmm. um, how, do, how are we supposed to interact with the world, um, how should we relate to the culture around us. And recently on a message, I talked about how... Um, we can oftentimes uh, outsource our, our our engagement with the world mm. to politics mm. because we allow politics to tell us what positions matter. And mm. then when we adopt those positions, it almost becomes like an excuse in our minds to not actually like care for those issues outside of some abstract position we took, mm. right? You know, if we hold an issue, if we hold a position on this this or that issue, in our minds, it kind of says, all right, I have the correct position, mm-hmm. therefore I'm good. Mm-hmm. But like what I said is Jesus doesn't care about positions. He cares about people. And we should have mm-hmm. that same mindset, right? Mm-hmm. That behind the positions that we hold, there's people that are actually affected by them, people that we should be loving and caring for. That's generally more important, right? I mean, mm-hmm. positions are useful, right? Mm-hmm. But they shouldn't uh, excuse us from actually loving real people. Mm-hmm. But then... As I was thinking about this topic some more after that message, you know, the idea of positions still is a real thing people wrestle with. And Mm -hmm. then this question popped my mind, you know, because I know sometimes people think this question is, are there correct Christian political positions, right? Mm -hmm. Should every Christian have the same political positions? Mm -hmm. And so that's what I want to talk about is that, like, (laughs) should Christians all have the same political (laughs) positions? Are there clearly right and wrong positions for Christians to hold? Well, there are clearly a multitude of positions that <laughs> Christians hold, right? So I, I think that's a very interesting, a very relevant question. But maybe, maybe before like getting there entirely, like, could you elaborate more on why we need a position or why why it's like a thing? Because okay, I, I think for me, my mind goes to two places, mm-hmm. right? One is like, okay, I don't want to worry about having a position or like thinking about politics at all because I'm just supposed to love people, mm-hmm. right? But in a sense, that's like being a poor steward of the Mm -hmm. political system that we currently have, Mm -hmm. like maybe not using all the means at our disposal, right? Or like to to, uh, spread the kingdom, right? Mm -hmm. Or live out the gospel. But then there's another sense in which like, as you're saying, right, which like some people will take, right, is outsourcing that to the political system, right? Um, All the change comes through the politics and then we don't think enough about or really worry all that much about, you know, day to day, how do I love people? Right, so like, what's the what's the balance there? I guess maybe is the is the question. Like, why do we why why are both important? Right? Yeah. Well, we we live in this system. We live in this world, right? In this like you know, well, I mean, for those who are from America, right? If you're mm-hmm. in this country, you live in this country, or if people are listening from other places, you live <laughs> in your own country, your own systems, right? And so, as citizens in whatever system we are, we have a duty to vote, mm-hmm. and hopefully, with that duty, we have a desire to be informed on mm-hmm. how we vote. And so we should honor the systems that God placed us, you know, like Romans 13, right? Mm-hmm. We should honor the systems that um, God has placed us in, the political systems. Um, mm-hmm. We don't 
hang our hope on them. That's what I was kind of trying to talk about in the last message was, you know, we don't, we shouldn't put our hope, right? We shouldn't put the hope of real change on our political <laughs> systems, right? And really that's only a modern idea, right? In the bat, in, in times like Jesus, like they, people didn't think of political systems as their means of hope in this world. No, I mean, the political systems or whatever power happened to be in is like, oh, whatever, mm -hmm. another empire, another day, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. for most people, it didn't matter. Like for your average Joe, like living like, you know, on, you know, in the fields, like working in the fields somewhere, right? It mm -hmm. didn't matter who was in power because <laughs> good it, news you've been liberated now pay taxes to a new yeah it, it just matters who is who are they paying taxes to um you know the idea of like politics being like a form of change is more of a modern idea mm. um and obviously we, we would love to see politics like do good in this world but we shouldn't hang our hope on it mm. but we are citizens right mm. and we are supposed to at least operate within the balance of that system so we should vote and so mm -hmm. should we have we should hold positions to the extent that they inform um, how we vote, because we should mm -hmm. vote from a place of being informed, and hopefully mm -hmm. um, we allow our Christian conviction to speak into those. And mm -hmm. that's actually my issue, is that I feel like too often than not, um, the direction of that flow mm -hmm. is the other way. Mm -hmm. We allow our politics you know, to inform what we actually believe, rather than letting what our Christian convictions inform. Um, because in this world, this world tells us that there are, you know, or this country specifically tells us that there's only two ways of looking at the world, right? Because mm -hmm. we live in a two-party system and those mm -hmm. two parties have become so like, you know, spread apart and especially more recently mm -hmm. that we're told that you have to like either be fully in one or fully in the other. Like there's no real sense of like middle ground. And basically that means that if we want to be part of whatever system or whatever party, then mm -hmm. we allow that to tell us what we should think and believe. And that's what I mean, that we're allowing the flow then to be politics over our own place of faith. Mm. And I think that's that's a problem, um, yeah, for us to, yeah. It sounds highly problematic, P-Doug, yeah. which then leads to a question, is there, which, which we are gonna talk about, and it's probably in the title of this uh, podcast episode, is there a correct Christian position? Is there a correct Christian, like, political <laughs> stance, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. Well, good question. So maybe we'll go through every single issue. And yeah. <laughs> that would be very spicy. Yeah, that would be so, super spicy. <laughs> super spicy. Um, <clears throat> no, because here's the thing. Like in this world, because we have a two-party system, um, everything gets really divided along those lines. It means every issue then gets watered down to two positions. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's the way we should look at issues in this world as simply being two only two sides to them hmm. um we should try to allow from we should try to understand a position a, we should try to understand a topic an issue not from the basis of what each side believes hmm. but what what you believe is correct based upon our own sense of conviction our own experience in the world uh, mm -hmm. we should not fall into slots that the world has decided because then we're allowing the world to say this is how we should think about these things, right? Mm -hmm. But every issue shouldn't boil down to a, a perfect dichotomy because that's mm -hmm. not the real world. The real world mm -hmm. isn't isn't just a bunch of dichotomies, right? Isn't mm -hmm. just a bunch of mutually exclusive things. No, like there's the world is more complex than that, and so we should think about these issues from more in a more nuanced um, type of way. And so I think a Christian who really wants to allow their faith to speak in politics should not be informed on should not think about these positions only in the way that politics tell them to understand them we should try to understand them from what we believe like jesus would think right what would mm. what does the bible say about these things mm -hmm. from a place of true conviction mm -hmm. not just what the world tells us to mm. so then how do we exist like as a body right given that like yeah there's a lot of nuance right between the two stances but sometimes some people are like on the on opposite ends of the mm -hmm. of the scale right on the opposite ends of the spectrum so it's like how do we as one body then approach those sorts of issues and approach living together? Right? Yeah. We approach from a place of love, right? <laughs> of charity towards one another. Mic drop. Um, yeah, mic drop, right? Um, the Bible says that whatever does not proceed from faith is sin. And mm. my hope is that any believer, um, if they're coming to a stance on some issue, that they came from a place of true faith and conviction. Because mm. that should be what guides how we think about Issues, not what a political party tells us to believe, but what our own faith leads us. Because what mm. does not proceed from faith is sin, right? Mm. We should operate from a place of conviction. Mm. 
Mm. And you know that that verse actually comes from the book of Romans, mm. and there was an issue going on in in the Roman church at the time around the idea of food sacrificed to idols, right? Mm, my favorite, uh, yummy. <laughs> yeah, I mean it was an issue not just in the Roman church, but in other churches as well. Like you know they talk about it in First Corinthians as well. Mm. But um, the issue was that like there are some Christians who would basically be like, well, food sacrificed to idols, uh, we you know it doesn't matter, right? There's no mm. There's no idols aren't real anyway. Uh, we know we're free in Christ. We're, you know, like this is it's not this is a non-issue, right? Just mm-hmm. eat it. Right? It doesn't matter. We know we we have the truth, and those, so that we know that like that's not that there's no such thing as idols, and so mm-hmm. therefore that's not a big deal. But some people will be like, no, like that's that's wrong, right? Don't sacrifice. Don't eat the food sacrificed to idols. Like that's mm-hmm. meat, right? That's a that's bad, right? That's mm-hmm. that's like given over. Um, and so what you know, Paul is basically saying is that like. You know, it doesn't really matter. Hmm. Like, but make sure you operate from a place of conviction. Meaning, if you think it's wrong, don't eat the meat, <laughs> right? <laughs> because your conviction is that it's wrong, hmm. and so operate from that place of conviction. Mm-hmm. And then, if you think it's good, then that's okay. Eat it. Eat it from mm-hmm. a place of true faith. But don't, but don't, don't make the other person like feel bad about it, right? Don't right. yell at each other based upon your convictions. You can operate together within the church. You can show charity and love to one another. Mm. Eastro humility. Don't allow your own conviction or your own views to be a weapon against others who hold different views. And I think that's mm. a good thing for us to keep in mind, right? We shouldn't, you know, especially in the political world where things are mm. much grayer than we want them to be. You know, so often we think, oh, it makes sense. This is obviously great. This is obviously wrong. No, like we live in a gray, nuanced world. We shouldn't boil things down to simplistic sides, right? Mm. Like, and the sides, and the way that you, way you phrase sides are meant to incite as much division as possible, right? <laughs> Think about the you know, pro-life, mm. pro-choice, right? Mm. How could you be against life or how could you be against choice, right? They, mm. These words were carefully crafted mm. to create as much division and to make it, your stance seem as correct as possible, right? Mm. Um, they're, they're well-chosen words <laughs> that whoever designed them, right? These, these words to describe things, you know, because yeah. you can inflict the most guilt on the other person for having the opposite stance mm. and they can make each other feel like, yeah, it's just the, the, like we, but we should not always say that allow the world to define the categories mm-hmm. that we follow because then we're just giving into the systems and the politics of this world versus operating out of a place of true conviction. Right. Conviction, matters of conscience. Mm-hmm. Right. And then also don't judge a fellow, fellow Christian, fellow brother or sister. Right. Um, because who are you to judge someone else's servant? Right. Mm-hmm. I think that's also in Romans 14. Mm-hmm. But yeah. So then that leads me to the question of like, okay, how do we dialogue about these things then, right? Where I feel like strongly about one position or I, I think a certain thing about a, a position and you think something else, right? So how do we, how do we have fruitful conversation, right? To that, that maybe, I, I don't know if like leading uh, to like a common ground is necessarily like possible sometimes, mm-hmm. right? But like, how do we have fruitful conversation to be able to learn from one another and then like, maybe come to like a agreement of, of sorts on how to function or operate yeah. as a, as a body. Yeah. We should talk and understand why people hold the views. Mm. Um, we shouldn't make assumptions. Mm-hmm. We're so quick to make assumptions about people. We assume that if someone has this view, then that says X, Y, and Z also about them. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, we often will then, if someone holds some issue, we're then going to assume that lumps them in with all like say like the bad of that, Mm. of that group right if mm-hmm. someone you know it's just for example right you can say someone someone might say oh you'll hold a few like republican views that means that you must be some like crazy conspiracy theorist right we, we go yeah. over to the complete opposite side or on the other side it's like oh you hold some of these more liberal like democratic views that must mean you just like are like completely just like you know on this other side right mm-hmm. we want to like we want to assume the extremes about others based upon a few views. But again, that mm. shows that we shouldn't as Christians fall into the categories that the world has assigned because mm. the world wants to divide us and separate the world seeks to, yeah, like, I mean, that's just the reality of the enemy in this world. Mm. The enemy's influence mm. is to sow division and, right. you know, having these different ways of looking at politics, looking at issues, um, are they're, they're framed in a way to create as much division as possible. Mm. We should try to reject that as best as possible. So we shouldn't mm-hmm. assume everything about a person just because of one thing they say. We should seek to understand and talk and, and love, mm-hmm. show charity, be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to mm-hmm. judge. 
Um, and we should maybe see, maybe they operating from a place of conviction, even if it's mm-hmm. a view that you disagree with, maybe they got to it from a place of conviction. Mm-hmm. Um, and we should then therefore maybe actually lead to a place of understanding. Maybe, oh, I didn't think about it that way. Mm. Maybe I need to rethink what I was thinking before because actually I never thought about that issue in that way. Mm-hmm. But that can only happen as we actually talk to one another from a place of charity and grace. Mm. Yeah. I think we've done a few episodes already on like living as a church body, right? Mm-hmm. Or at least we've it's come up several times, right? I can't mm-hmm. recall off the top of my head mm-hmm. um, specifically which ones, but I, I do know that we've touched on this topic before, right? How to live mm-hmm. in community with different people. Um, mm-hmm. So go check those out. Go yeah. check those out. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I so I mean, just to yeah. sort of bring it home, like it's okay to have positions. Like I said, mm-hmm. we should vote from a place of inform, being informed, but we shouldn't allow the world and the systems of the world to dictate what positions we hold, right? Mm-hmm. We should allow our faith to be um, how it does it. And even if that means that there's some things that span sides, like that's okay, right? We shouldn't think mm-hmm. that's wrong, right? But too often we don't want to do that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we, we feel like we have to adopt one full system, mm-hmm. um, you know? And sometimes even the world will say, oh, like sometimes the criticism against people who when they say these kind of things is like, oh, you're a both, you're just saying both and, right? Both mm-hmm. andism, right? That's almost like a r- dirty word mm-hmm. these days. But I'm not saying things are necessarily always both and, Mm. But I'm saying that we should reject the dichotomies that the world creates. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the, every issue, there shouldn't only be two ways to look at it. Mm. Um, we should try to seek to look at, the, at these, these issues from a position of faith and, um, and conviction. Mm. There's a complexity to everything. There's complexity, yeah. yeah. We live in a complex, gray, nuanced world. And <laughs> right. as I said before, yeah. right, behind positions are people. Yeah. Your position is meaningless if you can't love the people behind it. Mm-hmm. No matter what your stance is, if you can't love people affected by it, mm-hmm. then your stance is meaningless, right? Mm-hmm. We're called yeah. to love real tangible people. Mm. And so that should first and foremost be how we operate in that place. Like, do I, if I, I say I care about this issue, but do I actually care about real people affected by it? Or is it just an abstract thing that I'm thinking about? Mm. Not that it means the issue doesn't matter and we should still vote from a place of conscience and conviction, sure. but we also need to operate out of a place of conviction in our everyday lives, <laughs> not just when we throw cast a ballot. Yeah, it's a matter of consistency, mm-hmm. right? And genuine conviction. Genuine conviction, yeah. Genuine conviction. Well, that seems as good a place as any, right, to land the plane today. Mm-hmm. Is it a shorter episode? A little well, bit. No, it's a, yeah, it's like either a little bit shorter or about normal length. Now that I'm going to make a very long outro. <laughs> okay, but... Yes, you have been listening today to uh, Grace Coming to Chats, brought to you by Grace Coming to Church here in Philadelphia. If you're new here, check us out at philly.gracecoming.net and join us on Sundays. Might not be in Meyerson uh, because it's getting Check the, the website. Check the website. Follow us on Instagram. Do that whole Johns, right? Because we're in Philly. Oh, did you not like that? Do you not like Johns? Oh, I mean, I'm okay with it, but that was, uh, that was a weird use of the word, but it's oh, okay. I, I, I wanted to say something weird but like i said john's well, let's wrap up this john okay ra- wrap up this john uh, <laughs> yeah do all that to know where we're meeting so that you can join us on sundays for our series on counterculture through daniel mm-hmm. which is great because we're covering the second half of daniel too augers augers and we will see you next time <laughs>